You are now listening to the Building Her Dream podcast, where we have inspiring conversations with introverted women entrepreneurs who are building their dream lives and businesses on their own terms. Hosted by business operations strategist, author, and the founder of Building Her Dream, Shayla Burton. To learn more about this podcast and our magazine, visit www.buildingherdream.com. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Building Her Dream podcast. I'm your host and lifelong introvert, Shayla Burton, and I'm so excited to chat with today's guest, We have Dr. Eva Kletchik. She's a distinguished leader and pioneer in healthcare analytics and operational excellence, driving a significant progress in medicine, drug development, and equitable healthcare access. And she's all the way from Pennsylvania. Dr. Eva, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me here. It is a pleasure uh, being on your show and sharing my story with the audience. Thank you. Yes, yes. Now, um, if you've listened to our podcast before, you know that we're all about living the dream life. And so why don't you just tell me what does your perfect dream life look like? Well, great question. Um, my dream life is very simplistic. Um, uh, I I would like to be able to live pretty much full time um, at the lake in Maine and enjoying the morning walks and the sunrise and the sunsets and seafood and just having a low key life while I publish books, write them and and help the locals co- the local community in in Maine. So. It's a it's very simplistic, but able to accomplish all of the aspects of my life that I I'm really passionate about. Yes, I love a simple life. That sounds great to me. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Doctor E, why don't you tell us a little bit more uh, about yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, so, um, as you mentioned, I am an, an, an executive in the healthcare analytics and operations space. I've been there in uh, for about 20 years right now, and I get the opportunity to indirectly impact the progress in, in healthcare pharmaceuticals and all of the related industries. Um, it is really important for us, especially as we are thinking about what it means for quality of life. How do we identify new drugs and how do we ensure that everyone has the right access? We all know that there are some some communities and um, different groups that might not always have the right access. And I think we, we have to really drive towards that and um, understand the barriers and try to eliminate them. Uh, for uh, Overall, as I'm thinking about where we've been in the last 20 years in healthcare, Um, the space has really evolved. We started with talking about uh, diseases that now we can consider that are quite well managed, like diabetes, uh, like cardiovascular, allergy. And now we are in more oncological aspects. We are um, thinking about precision medicine. We are driving towards rare diseases being managed or even trying to figure out how do we curate them. And we are talking about um, rare diseases, for those of you who might not know, it is um, it's a very small population of patients in the United States or, or around the world that before were not really part of the medicine spectrum because their diseases are less than 200,000 individuals in the States, for, you know, providing much more harder way of um, identifying what drives those diseases, but also how to test them and get the drugs um, for the care. So it's always nice to talk about these aspects when we are thinking about curing not only the more generally massive um, or mass type of um, conditions, but also focusing more on those diseases that others may be dealing with for which we have not had any impact done or any influences done for a very long time. Wow, Um, you do really amazing work and you are an introvert. Introverts are out there doing amazing work. When did you first realize that you were introverted? So I think probably throughout most of my life, I knew that I was not always 
don't want to be in a large group of individuals being at the parties and not the life of um, um, of, of the party. We use that to hide. Um, and um, and it does take a little bit for some of us to be to understand it, but also realize that being introverted or having some kind of anxieties when it comes to social interactions is a normal thing that many individuals um, uh, have. It's just a matter of how do you cope with those. And I know we're going to dive in into some of those tactics, but I just want to mention that also uh, listeners who might be thinking, do I have a career if I, I can't be in a larger groups or if I do not know how to make those social connections? I'm going to tell you yes, and you will uh, discuss some of those ways for overcoming them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, being an introvert is not a hindrance. It's mm -hmm. it's a strength, in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think there were any specific challenges that you faced um, in either like your social or professional um, background that affected you as you were trying to build your career? Great question. So first of all, I want to mention for those of you who are introverted, the, the power of not speaking up always is also that we listen and understand the body language of others. So I just want to put it out there because I think many individuals who might not be always the, the life of the party don't realize that it's watching what we do really very very well for those of us who are um, who are not as social. Um, for me, what was interesting is when I um, is that I learned um, that I can overcome it in a in a very interesting way. First of all, if you ask me when I was younger whether I would be willing and able to do presentations in front of a couple hundred of people, I would say absolutely not. I had anxiety just picking up in a classroom, and I was always a very good student. I still had the anxieties once I moved into my uh, professional life, especially when we are talking about being in a room, the only woman, or with being with executives, always thinking about it. Is someone going to think that what I said doesn't make sense or is a little silly? I mean, we all have those insecurities. Um, for me, what I started really working through was uh, practicing a lot in front of the mirror, recording myself, looking at my body language, but then taking on a different personality. When individuals see me present, for example, at conferences, uh, my passion um, comes through because I'm passionate about certain topics and I love talking about them because I'm sharing my story, my perspective, my expertise with others. And ultimately, I hope that I benefit them or give them a little bit something to think about um, as they are going through their own journey, whether it would be from the sharing my knowledge on the on analytics or sharing my knowledge on how to um, progress in male-dominated fields, whatever that might be. So that was one of those ways that I practiced and I really just take on a different personality almost. I almost become, I don't want to say that I'm acting because it's not that. I, I allowed the other part of my personality come in that feels comfortable teaching. And when I go out and do presentations, that's how I do that. I love to share my, my place. The other piece was, I am still not always the best speaking up in, in meetings, that's a that's a very important part when you are an executive, and especially on the topics that I might perceive myself not always being the well-versed individual or knowing that others are watching you, right? When you are in your career, you are continuously watched. So I started practicing, and even um, I always told myself through every in, in every meeting, speak up at least once, mm. say something. So you give yourself a lower bar. And you also allow yourself to contribute to the to the discussion. Sometimes what I told myself, especially at the beginning, speak up at the beginning of the meeting so you never run out, out of time, right? So this way you know yeah. it are in that point of, oh, the meeting just ended and I never said anything. Well, if you tell yourself within first 10 minutes, you raise your hand and you contribute, you don't have to ever worry about it. So for me, that was an easy way for presenting my thoughts. The second thing was, um, it was it was also always, um, uh, at, at first it wasn't very, um, I guess, well designed. Sometimes I, I sounded strangely or it was the context was sometimes off or I was coming in a little bit more um, um, assertive. But then I also started realizing with which people I have a way of 
either um, they follow me or I follow them in, in a discussion. So if they were in the room, that natural flow started coming up and you then play off each other. So really in, in your circle of individuals, identify that. What it is that, who is that person that can help you, whether they know it or not, you can really create a very natural flow where your contributions can be seen and heard and it doesn't look awkward or doesn't look any other way that you are coming in because you just need to. So in a, in a quick summary, especially in the, in the um, corporate world, at first say at least one thing I'm gonna contribute. Then set yourself within the first 10 minutes I'm gonna contribute. And then start applying those and find someone else, especially in the meetings that you know it's gonna be a little bit harder where you can play off of someone else and then that naturality of the discussion is going to definitely flow through. So that's a little bit of a hint for everyone. Wow, you just gave us some really great gems, um, especially about in meetings. So I am also the person that will be in the meeting not saying anything. Um, and I always feel bad because I know that the other people probably think that I'm not engaged or I don't want to be there, which is not true. I'm, I may be very engaged in the meeting. It's just, it's, um, my brain has to just process everything that I'm hearing and also seeing, because like you mentioned before about body language, that's something that, um, I pay attention to as well, because sometimes what people are saying with their body is different than what they're saying out of their mouth. So that's something that I'm always focused on. And so um, when I'm in meetings, I, I may not have something uh, to say at that time. But um, like you mentioned, we have to try, try to say something. And so doing it in the very beginning to get it off of my like to-do list is really, really smart. So I'm going to make a, a note of that for myself. Um, and then you also talked about um, like how you're passionate about the field that you're in. And so you're able to present. That's one thing that I think others don't realize about introverts. They sometimes think that, oh, we don't like to talk um, or we don't like to be social. But if we're passionate about a topic, we'll talk to you. We'll talk your head off for hours. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely noticed that about myself. Um, because when I was younger, I didn't think that I like really enjoyed talking, but it was just, I, I didn't want to talk about what everyone else was talking about, but yeah, once you get me on a subject that I love, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> yes. Um, so I want to talk, uh, just go back to like growing up. Um, how did your family perceive your introverted nature or like, did they support you or, um, or did you really not notice anything related to that when you were a child? Yeah, I, um, I always had a very supportive family. So uh, both of my parents supported my dreams and, um, and always motivated me or give ideas of what I should do next. And I think that really helped my brother is much more social, for example. So he always had a lot of friends. I wasn't the one with a lot of friends, but I was also very, I was interested in different things. I managed having friends by going to different clubs, whether it was a history club, mathematics club. You know, you find the ways of compensating. So on the surface, I don't think it always looks like you are an introvert and you never participate because you, you participate at the pace and in your own spectrum that you're comfortable with. For me still, belonging to a group is a great way, participating in seminars, going to conferences, going to happy hours with the individuals that I know, or even without them when I have to make those connections. It does help because you are going in there for a common topic. So by me um, uh, coming to the United States, I was an, an uh, exchange student. I developed relationships with those who were in my position. 
or I was in a math club when I was here in the United States in high school, the same thing. So I think it changes. You are reverting a little bit and you are um, presenting the, the passion on the topics in the way that you need. God bless you. Um, and uh, so so I would say my my parents noticed that there was a difference between my brother and I, but they also saw that I was very driven in different areas. So I compensated in, a, in identifying what am I passionate about, what I care about, and getting involved and being part of a group that way, where that pressure wasn't necessarily there all the time. Mm. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know that um, because I was thinking about my childhood and being around family that was a lot more social and a lot more loud. And so I kind of stood out as the the quiet one that never talked according to them. Um, and yeah, so I was just wanted to, I was just curious to see like how other families uh, handled that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what inspired you to get into the field that you're in? So I always had a, a knack for um, analytics and mathematics. Um, when I was in my PhD, I, I've done a lot of taking a lot of econometrics courses and microeconomics, which ultimately, when I was applying for different jobs, gave me the edge because that's when um, healthcare, especially pharmaceutical uh, research, started going into analyzing data and the larger data sets becoming more and more, pop uh, more, and more popular as well as starting to understand the impacts of different variables of so doing regression analytics. Um, I applied and had a wonderful discussion. And this is when really that, um, I always knew that I want to do analytics, but I didn't necessarily knew that I'm going to be doing that in healthcare. I am actually very happy that I did this because I'm um, observing my um, maternal grandmother dealing with um, rheumatoid arthritis at the, in the eighties, this was a deliberating disease where most people would have never had a quality of life that right now individuals with the disease had. Now we, we don't consider RA to be a disease that's going to um, uh, uh, put you into bed. You can actually have a normal life if you're on those the, those uh, drugs that are supporting the, the autoimmune disease. So I think that was that personal story helped me throughout to move me forward, but also is, I would say again, is the passion for analytics, for mathematics, and understanding of economics helped me really to go in there and start applying uh, cross, uh, I'm doing that cross section between the topics that I love about and then um, starting to understand how I can impact another um, uh, industry with a uh, with the with the expertise that I already had and and ultimately keep developing throughout my career. Mm. Wow, wow! And so you've made it to the executive level in your career, which is really amazing. Um, how did you? I I feel like to get to the point where you are in your career. There's a lot of like building relationships and networking involved. Um, how did you approach that as an introvert? Great question. It's not the easiest, right? We are not the individuals who can do a small chat. I mean, those who know me, I don't do a small talk. <laughs> yeah. It's it's talking just about weather. It's not only what I what I like. So I think one of the best advices, one of the best ways for me was, hey, you have to put your, uh, put yourself out there. There is there is no other way. Also, as you can see from my personality, I do have more of that direct type of tone. So that helps me sometimes because you can get, get attention. And by me going to conferences, clearly there was always a point of discussion that people were approaching me on, oh, it was interesting what you said, let's discuss. So by me presenting, that gave, um, I was creating for myself a topics of in common um, discussion that individuals could approach me without me needing to do the first step. So I think that was always good. The second thing that I, that I keep saying, especially earlier in my career, find individuals who are more outgoing than, than, than yourselves and uh, surround yourself with them, those who you clearly trust. Because what may happen is they can introduce you to those circles, they can introduce you, and by the sheer fact that you are with them, that connection, that 
yin and yang, right? Because we all have uh, extroverts also sometimes talk too much. They don't get the body language. They don't get how they might be coming off. So there is that 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 connection there. But by them, by those more extrovert individuals who have that network already, by them bringing you in, you immediately get a little bit more confidence. And individuals, the halo effects, it's coming onto you. So you're becoming part of the group and, and individuals start knowing you. So for me, that was very helpful because I'm not the one to walk up to anyone and say, by na- you know, my name is Dr. Eva Kleczyk. That's not what I do. That's it. So I always had that opportunity with others who are already talking to, you know, bring me into the discussion, introduce me. So as I'm saying, find yourself someone um, uh, who can help you with that and really help facilitate that discussion and be advocate for you in the same way, even in the social setting. Let's be honest, I don't, I, I still in social settings, um, especially on my personal side, while I overcome more the per, the the, the professional one, because there is more tactics that I can leverage. In a social setting on your personal life, when you are not the expert, when you are not someone people admire or someone people look up to, it's still very difficult, right, to create yourself and put yourself out there. And for those of you who might be hearing, oh, she overcome it. No, my husband and I had to create ways of us going into settings. My husband come from a huge family, which are loud, which like doing certain things. And I'm the, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm the Polish American who didn't grow up in the United States, coming in here with a very different perspective on culture and interactions. Who lived in a much smaller family and need to adjust. So you know, even with with my husband, we have developed a way. My husband is very chatty, so we have developed a way where he brings me in. But then we also have a point of checking with each other. It's like, are you okay? Are you, you know, and then if, if, if I'm not okay, if there is some, if, if I don't feel comfortable, he either brings me in or we just say very politely say it's time to leave and we leave. So I think there is a, you need to have this um, way of having someone having your back, but also helping you out, bringing you in and also checking with you. So for those of you who might be, might know me professional, have seen me present and they're thinking, well, how is that possible? Well, we all have, we all are coping with different things at a different level and we all have to have advocates on our on the, on the different sides and I'm, and I'm going to tell you my uh, the social component is what I'm still working on as as I'm assuming many introverts do throughout their lives yeah absolutely I'm definitely still working on that as well I'm really good at um, you know, building relationships one on one, like having one on one conversations, right. but it's the the large groups of people where I definitely struggle with. I'm with yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I always prefer very very much smaller circle because it's easier mm-hmm. to go and, and you can give the attention to the other person, right? It yeah. changes that dynamic and you can observe them and you and um, and you don't have to fight for your room either, so for your place in the discussion. Right, right. And what you mentioned about, you know, um, bringing someone along with you who are a bit more comfortable um, chatting, that is is really smart. And it's great that you have um, your husband who can um, help you with that as well. I definitely like to align myself with other people who are more social than me. Um, a lot of my friends and, you know, associates that I connect with are also introverts, but they are more talkative than um, me. <laughs> and so that's super helpful to when we're going to like events and things like that. Um, they can get the conversation conversations started and then I can just kind of get in there when I can. Um so yeah, that that's a very smart strategy. So you have been very successful in your career. Can you share like a um a success or a milestone that you're particularly proud of? Yes, thank you. Um so last year I had the privilege to receive an award from um the White House president. Uh, Biden. This was the Presidential Lifetime uh, Achievement Award for 
all of the great volunteer work and the advancements in healthcare um, analytics, especially in the women's space. So that will say wonderful um, uh, a word that means a lot to me, but also presents it that even as an immigrant to the United States, um, you can achieve everything that you that you dream for. And for those of you listening, I will say is yes, um, whether you're introverted, extroverted, drive towards your goals because it's taking one step at a time get you closer to whatever um, that placement might be your your goal and support. I never imagined that I would be recognized, but once I once I did, it really provided that confidence that all of the work, all of the involvement, all of the community work, professional engagement, it all pays off and someone sees you just just beyond yourself. And I think this is very important for all of us to remember that when we sometimes think we are sitting in a corner and no one sees us, what individuals are watching us continuously. So always understand that, always know it, always be, be authentic to yourself we can change whether we are extrovert, introverted, or our backgrounds and so forth. But what we can be is be true to ourselves and present the passions we have and the drive we have and um, advocate for the for the topics that are important to us to uh, benefit not only ourselves, but benefit the larger community, the larger um, um, uh, topic or the larger goal that we are all striving forward. Wow, that's amazing that you received that award. That's a, a huge honor. So congratulations to you. Um, absolutely. And that is just um, very inspiring for all of us who are working hard in our careers and in business that we too can do, we can, we can have that success as well. Um, and so, yeah, congratulations again on that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, um, now with your career and it sounds like it keeps you very busy. <laughs> um, I've been seeing you on social media at the events that you're attending, um, and other awards that you've received. And I'm wondering if it can also be exhausting. <laughs> and what do you do to like re recharge and keep your energy levels up? Great question. Yes, doing everything or doing a lot, which you know for yourself, you are also extremely busy. And congratulations <laughs> on your cover in your magazine at, in the 12 months. It is, you do have to take care of yourself, whatever that might be. Um, I don't have a secret pill or anything like that for, for energy to come back. I am, I, I do need to sleep a lot. So some people laugh at me that I go to bed early by nine o'clock. I'm sound asleep, but that's what helps me. So for me, sleep is very important to, I wake up early, usually around five thirty, six o'clock and have my coffee and have that moment for myself where I get to think about everything that I want to be doing, what I need to get done. So that mental clarity is very important for me, especially in the morning. So when I go to sleep early, I, I do wake up uh, early as well and just plan for what I need to get done. Um, the other component is I do like to walk um, every day. I try to go for a walk in the winter. It's much more difficult because the weather might not be always the best, but just having that go outside and, have the moment for yourself or you're walking with the music of, of your choice. I have a, on my um, um, on my list of music, I have a variety of music, including jazz, including classical music. So when they all play, they give you a different vibe and restructure your brain a little bit because your different parts of your, uh, your, your brain are feeling that music and thinking about it. So it helps really re uh give that energy back and set me in the, in the right tone. And finally, for me, is making sure that while I, you know, you won't see me per se taking all the time, a lot of PTO or the, the personal time off, I do travel to places where I, I can take a few minutes for myself. You're going to hear me talk a lot about Maine. My husband and I have the privilege of having a, um, a, a lake house, and I like going there and just sitting on a porch and having a coffee or going on a boat ride, and that simplicity helps me really level myself and readjust myself from the craziness of professional life, 
of doing community, of always um, a work or getting involved or always being on because to your point, you are always you you always have to be at your best because when you are doing a podcast, some you know everyone wants the best of you. When you are doing a presentation, everyone wants the best of you. When you are writing an article, that article you also want to present yourself in the best way because that's that's who you are. You are you you know you are you always want to be presented in a way that you that you would like. But sometimes I also think about it. Thinking about being at that himself, I'm not gonna tell you though. So easy. I don't need to sleep. And now we all have lows we all have days where people around me my husband or my family they see that i am that i'm that i'm, that I'm exhausted and it's really knowing what it works for your body even if it's for me sometimes just going sitting out in a chair and just like melting into it and doing it allowing your body to to just relax and then i do what everyone else does uh, for me is when my parents arrive from poland it's great to spend time with them they give me a different energy going out with my husband and just spending the one-on-one -on -one time with him without anything else is it gives it energy so the main advice i would i would say is to everyone we all are struggling finding the balance if when you when you're doing a lot you but you do have to think about it do you have enough increments in your day that that benefits you and what are what they, they are there is no judgment of what they mean right so if you need to sleep eight hours ten hours you should do that because otherwise your body's going to fail if you need to exercise, do it. If you need to take scheduled vacation every month for a long weekend, do it. Just think about it, what is best for you to give you that mental break. And, and don't worry about what others think. It's not their life. It's not their body. It's you. So you need to do what fits you or the best and give you and allows you to clear a mindset and, and re-energize yourself so you can be the best version of yourself the next time you're doing the podcast, the next time you're doing presentation or whatever, whatever you're going to be showing up where people will expect you to be you on that stage. Exactly. I definitely agree. We all need to recharge. And so we do need to find out what works best for us. As you were speaking, I was just thinking about my week <laughs> because this week I have a lot of, um, podcast recordings. And so I'll be doing a lot of talking. Um, and I know that I am going to be so drained, <laughs> even though I enjoy this, it's, it's, it's definitely going to drain me. And so I have to figure out what am I going to do um, in between these calls to just get my energy back. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure you can do wonderful as, uh, throughout the week. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Well, Dr. Ava, it's been really great chatting with you. Um, before we go, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to share like where our listeners can find you if they want to learn more about you or connect with you. So the listeners can go to my Instagram page, Dr. Eva Kletchik, or they can go to my Facebook page, Eva Kletchik. And if anyone would like to reach out, connect, um, please do. I always appreciate additional connections. Connections are very good. In the social media are the best way for many in the individuals who might be introverted or are introverted or feel introverted occasionally to connect without any pressure. So. I would say is yes, um, uh, let's let's connect. I always love to hear others' perspectives and follow them and see what exciting things they they are doing as well and support them wherever I can. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, we'll definitely have your social media in our social notes so our listeners can. Um, check you out but i just again want to really thank you for joining me today dr ava well thank you so much for having me here and thank you for, uh, for those listening for joining us and listening to our story and hopefully we inspired you or give you some hints uh, that can help you in your own introvert journey throughout life and your professional careers thank you so much for having me you're welcome. And thank you to our audience again for listening. This has been another episode of the Building Her Dream podcast. 
If you've enjoyed it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, leave us a review, and stay up to date with what we're doing by visiting www.buildingherdream.com.